All right, guys. Welcome back to the OA Podcast. I'm Ryan Matthews. We got our special guest, a fun one today. We got Evan Hogger from Kime PT. How you doing today, Ev? Fantastic. Thanks awesome. for having me, man. No problem. We've done this on the other side. I've sat in on the uh, you did the Kime Podcast. You, so you were our first official guest on right. the podcast. Yeah, not our first official guest here, but uh, <laughs> That's right. one one that comes uh, highly touted. There so, we go. Yeah. Um, Ev, I guess the first question is is um, just explain a little bit of what you do with OA and kind of the partnership we've been able to begin, um, begin building, and uh, over the last few years, what, what you've been able to do with us, man. Yeah, so, um, so our company is physical therapy based, so we have a group of physical therapists and we're in the same facility as Optimum Athletes in Sacramento. We have facilities in some other locations in the greater Sacramento area. We actually opened one in Reno this year. Um, with, with these guys, it's been, it's been kind of a unique scenario. All of our other settings are gym based. So it's, you know, adult fitness and sports performance for athletes of all kinds. This facility has been very driven towards baseball. It's a baseball facility. I played baseball growing up and baseball has always been my passion. So, um, it's like dream come true for me. And when, uh, when Ryan and Casey came into the, in the building a few years ago, the, just the initial conversations we had, like, I remember thinking in my head, like, oh shit, like there, we could do some pretty cool collaborating here. Right. Can I swear on this? We're good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So I just remember thinking like, there's some really cool collaboration that could come from like the, you guys are just having higher level conversations about baseball skills than I was accustomed to. So I was able to learn a lot from you guys in the, in the process. And then I think the collaboration of how we've put together um, assessment programs and training programs and the support we've been able to give you and the support you guys have been able to give us has been um, has been phenomenal. I mean, I, this, I'm biased, but I think we've built we've built a pretty special baseball facility, and um, I, yeah, I think I think it's awesome. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, just look at over the last you know two plus years, just who we've been able to work with. Um, I mean, with the likes of Lucas Giolito and Dylan Carlson and Nick Mears making his major league debut. Um, Sam Long pushing along his career. Well, you I know. read some great things on Sam yesterday. Yeah, so uh, Sammy's two awesome pieces. Right, Sammy's doing big things. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll touch on that a little bit. Ev, what have you been able to do, and kind of how have we been able to put together an off-season program? Just give us the Cliff Notes version of what these guys are looking for and what we're building for them when they come in at the end of a season, looking to get prepared for the next season. So I think the biggest thing they're all looking for is they're looking for something customized. So when, when guys get to that level, when guys get to that elite level, the Giolitos and the Carlsons and Sam and Nick and all these guys you're talking about, it, it no longer works to give them a stock program. Now, I, the counter to that is nobody that comes through this building really gets a stock program. Right. But generally with, with, with a youth athlete or with a younger athlete, you can kind of, you can just throw stuff at them and they're going to get better. General right. strength is going yes. to mean good things for them. When we're talking about these elite athletes that are, they're so dialed in everything that they do. They've been strong for years, so sometimes strength is the issue, but usually it's more of a movement quality thing, and you guys are making just fine-tuning things on the baseball side. Right. And so um, the, the way we can complement that is help build their off-season program to kind of supplement the baseball side of things. And if you look at a, a traditional off-season in professional baseball is 162 games or minor league, a little bit less. is It's a tremendous grind. So guys, finish that, and we'll usually not allow them into the building for a couple of weeks. Right. And Ryan, Ryan's awesome at this. He's like, I don't even want to see your face. You're not allowed in here. You can't come in here. So yeah, that's gone. a big one for me. So they're gone for a chunk of time. And for every guy, that's a, that's a different period of time. But um, I think that's super important to kind of bring their body back to, back to a baseline. And then we go through basic assessment, which teases out mobility deficits, strength deficits, uh, movement quality deficits, and then the program is built around that. So the initial phases of the program are how do we attack those movement deficits, those uh, mobility deficits, and they slowly ramp them into a building phase. For a baseball athlete, they get maybe one building phase a year if they're lucky. Some right. guys get, you know, they go fall ball and they get run up against the clock, but one kind of strength building phase per uh, off season or per entire competitive year. And so we have to take advantage of that. So that's when we get to, in the weight room, hit them with a lot of volume. Um, the guys tend to love that time because that's when they walk around and start busting out of their yeah. shirts and they get their arm farm and they get to have a good time. Um, start pumping back up. Start pumping back up. But then the key is with, with the, so you always, I always think of two lines, right? I think of their, their sports stuff and then their weight room stuff. Yeah. 
And so when the off season starts, the sports stuff, the baseball stuff is down here. The weight room stuff is the, is the priority. So as we go through the off season, this is gonna start to kind of change, right? The sports right. stuff's gonna start to like December, we start to like almost start to make this cross where they're playing, depending on the guy. So like Lucas uh, Giolito may need a little less prep time for things than maybe like Sam Long, who's gotta go prove himself. So right. Sam in December might be starting to make this like peak where baseball stuff's starting to become pretty important. He's starting to get uh, ramped up on the mound, getting things dialed, and the weight room has to complement that. And so this line in the weight room is generally gonna be volume. So how much workload are we putting on them here versus how much workload are we putting on them here? And those lines will cross at some point. And then in season, obviously we're gonna spend a lot of time like this. Right. Right. Yeah, it's good stuff. So that's kind of a little bit of uh, the inside of how we build the, the pro guys, you know, when, they, when we spend most of our time with them. Um, transitioning a little bit, um, kind of the big chunk of what we wanted to talk about today is in season programming. And more so geared towards most of our athletes and um, our high school athletes. But once we've done that, and we kind of do that at just a smaller scale and not as, um, not as I guess, you know, finely tuned or looking to make those small adjustments with the pro guys. But for the high school guys, we see a lot of bigger jumps and especially in, you know, strength or body weight or, um, you know, velo in their off-season chunk. But just for any of these athletes that have done a big training block what should their in-season stuff look like or you know should they be doing in-season stuff period because that's a big thing and i'm sure you guys see it on the pt side a big thing we see is a lot of these athletes are they just stop doing training when it's in season because now it's time to play mm -hmm. and um i mean we know i know the answer to this that's not the right way to do it but maybe well, give us a little insight on what's happening in season and what we need to do and why. So if you have a 20 game high school season, you might be able to get away with stopping and not doing anything. I'd never recommend that, but you might be able to get away with it. But none of these kids are preparing for months in the off season for a 20 game high school season. Right. Right. They're preparing for high school season and then a competitive traveling summer season. And they're going to play almost as many games as the, as the pro Absolutely. guys. Right. And yes. sometimes probably more like right. they, they play a ridiculous amount of baseball. So, Training cannot stop. And so go back to these lines again I was talking about, right? We've got volume of, of your lift and volume of your, um, of your sports stuff. And early in the off season, this is what it looks like. And then it shifts at some yes. point. In the season, when I say volume shifts on the lift, if this is the lift down here, I don't mean that, that intensity goes down. Quite the opposite. What we know is to maintain strength over a competitive season, the intensity of your lift has to remain at top level. So the purpose of this building phase, the high volume off season phase, is to get to a point um, where you can lift these high weights at low rep schemes. So like one to three reps, three to five reps, like very on the low, low on the rep schemes type right. things, so that they can maintain strength over the course of the season. We want to be able to lift a heavy weight. And we want to be able to not be sore the next day. The biggest key from a strength program in season is you don't want it to get in the way of their competitive time, right? Because right? that's the most important thing. Back to our lines. Most important thing yep. is that. So we need to change what they do. And the way you change that, the biggest key is changing volume. So you reduce volume significantly, but intensity still stays high. So we still get that big central nervous system hit of, of having to put heavy weight on our body but we don't get sore because we're not doing it enough times. Right. Like if you just think in your head to the times like you've trained for years, we'll get you on back to life here soon, but <laughs> it's coming. It's, it's coming, coming. It's coming. But you've, you've trained countless off seasons, countless years. If you think back to the times you were the most sore, if you worked up to like, you know, 90% of your one RM and you did three to five sets of one to three, you probably weren't very sore the next day. Correct. But you grab some lighter weight, 60 to 75% of your one RM and you do four sets of eight, you were probably hating yourself the oh, next yeah. day. Everything's yeah, yeah, burning, yeah. right? Getting up so, off the toilet's tough. Yeah, exactly, if you're squatting, you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. But so, so that's, the, that's the key when we come to in season. We don't want the weight room to get in the way of the season, but we want to maintain strength as much as we possibly can. Right. And that's, that's maybe more of a thought. Maintain is maybe more of a thought on the pro side of things. If you look at a high school competitive year, there's probably more times during the season where you could do another building phase and they're probably just so raw and growing exactly. and their bodies are maturing that you'll see gains over the course of a season with them. Right. So that's even something there is like it's 
it's not unheard of to make strength gains yeah, during the no. season, especially for a young high school type yeah, no, athlete. These, these kids could grow three, four inches in right. that time, right? Just become a bigger human being, more testosterone going through their body. Yes. Yeah, they can, they can make gains during the season. And correct me if I'm wrong, may, missing that, that time, let's just call a high school season or, like you said, you know, they're playing almost the whole calendar year now. Yeah, right. And if we take all of that time off, we're missing a huge chunk of development, yeah. right? For a it's young not kid. Work. It's not it's yeah, it's, right. it's not going to work. So if you compare that to a kid who trains year round or has his program dialed, you know, and tailored to what he's doing on the field, mm-hmm. he's probably going to make more gains over a calendar year. And when we look at the full scope of development, it's you're probably going to miss that and never be able to regain that, right? If you just don't prioritize it when you're a sophomore junior senior in high school we can't reset the clock and ever get that time back nope that's 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 super true and that's a super critical time period in athletes development process right i mean those kids are looking for the next level like in the high school time they're probably looking for you know their offers or whatever whatever school they're going to go to those you don't have a lot of time right you have a four-year time period to make a difference and make a change and yeah you, you can't waste it great i think another another sorry to cut you off there another critical thing with the strength program is we you know we can adjust volume but the other thing to really consider can get a little more technical but we want to make we want to take away the eccentric stressors on the body so other things that will make you sore is anything that's loaded pretty aggressively eccentrically so like ballistic stuff right probably not going to be there their sport is their ballistic stuff they're going to be doing enough volume of hitting and throwing and running i mean they're gonna be on their feet all day we need to make our in-season lift kind of complement that right and so if volume's coming down, instead of the you know, 60 to 90 minutes they're spending in the gym in the off-season, maybe these off-season, the in-season lifts are more like 30 to 40 minutes. Right. Um, and we take away eccentric stressors like ballistic things. You can go as far as to take like heavy split squats and make them step-ups, less eccentric time. Um, we, you can change the lifts around to kind of fit, uh, to still maintain strength without kind of blowing up the body before, before right. a game. So that's another problem we could see in season is not just people that aren't doing a program, which isn't ideal, Mm -hmm. but they don't ever change their program to fit what needs to happen in season as well. So that's the big thing that we're doing in here and why we, why we, you know, collaborate with Kime and their professionals over there and kind of giving us a look at what this in season program needs to look like. Um, another thing we've been a, been fortunate to offer over the years past, Evan, is the arm care program for yeah. you guys. Um, it's something that comes included with our high school in-season program. And guys get to come in here a couple nights a week, whether they've had bullpens early in the season or, you know, they pitch a game. And they just get a little bit more uh, time with you guys than just a general, hey, here's your recovery program or here's your arm care program to execute on your own. Can you explain a little bit about what that Kime OA arm care program looks like in season? Yeah, so throwing, you know, throwing is bad for the body. We can just say that, right? Like we're not meant to be able to throw a ball 90 to 100 miles an hour and as many times as these guys do it. So naturally there's going to be some tissue stuff that comes with that. There's going to be some things that come with that and some of them can be completely normal. Right. So very normal to get super tight on the backside of the, of the upper quarter of the shoulder, all the stuff that decelerates the throwing motion, again, back to everything that's under some kind of an eccentric load, right? So very normal for that stuff to get tight. There's a few specific indicators you can look for if they're missing overhead, if they're missing across body, if they start missing internal rotation. Um, if they start missing external rotation, that's usually a really good sign that something not great is about to happen. Right. You think about that, right? Like if they're missing external rotation, they're going to throw and force themselves there. If they can't get it here, probably going to gap here. Yeah. Right? So that's, that would be a bigger, bigger red flag. But those other things are good flags that you can see kind of coming down the chain. And nobody, people might not, might not feel pain, but you know, as soon as they start missing those range of motions, we know more stress goes on the shoulder, more stress goes on the elbow. Um, and so some basic soft tissue things we can do um, to clear that up. So part of the, I always thought these arm care things were a ton of fun the last couple of years when we did them. It's like, it's like the training room, like back in college, right? Yeah. It's like the, and for you, probably a much higher level than that. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, all the guys come in, they have a good time, three or four of them at a time. And uh, one of them's on the table getting their tissue work done. Somebody else is on a foam roller. Somebody else is using a gun. Somebody else is doing some stability drill. I think another big part of arm care is, 
is the the arm care of getting the you know getting the ball in the socket we talk about this here right. all the time but getting the stability muscles to fire so the arm care we do is soft tissue work with cups and blades and and some of the kind of sexy stuff but then also using like blood flow restriction normatec uh foam roller tools and then weights for stability yeah that's all that's all good stuff and that's one thing that um you know i really didn't realize this at first but with these kids that are in season and they're coming in jumping on the table, you know, it's some of that almost like prehab stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. A lot of those red flags can kind of rear their ugly head before they become problems. And, you know, sometimes that it just takes, you know, you just doing a little test on them for one, you know, one shoulder to show some fatigue. And it's like, hey, man, we probably need to take, you know, let's turn this into a one week, you know, pump the brake situation instead of keep going, which they would have never had that. If and they weren't in a program a like this, six you know, month pump the brake thing. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. hundred right. percent. Yep. Completely agreed. Awesome. I think that's exactly the point. Being able to catch those things early is, is super critical. Cool. Well, I think that pretty much touches on anything. If you got anything else, go ahead. Um, I know it's been great working with you guys and um, guys come by. Um, Evan's in here with his amazing team of PTs um, and we can pr- try to solve any, any issues you guys got going on in season. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for coming on, Ev. Of course. Thanks, guys.